Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, well, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Anne. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's see, my, I have three sons. My youngest one actually got a degree from Davis and you in um, the computer science, electroengineering, I think in 01. So I'm used to the, but I haven't been back since then, so, so it's a pleasure to be here. Okay, now, um, oh, I didn't say. Oh, okay. <laughs> start with some jokes. Uh, I've been retired 13 years from Berkeley, so I haven't had to do as many talks, and I can get more research done. My friends in Paris wants a concert pianist, and but he really doesn't do any public performances because of stage fright. So in Paris, you know, I say I'm going to give a talk, and, and my friends say, would well, you have stage fright? You get upset, you get nervous, do you have fear and all this, and I say no, but the audience does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, what I'm going to talk about today, now the way I used to talk about this, to, well I've been doing it five years now, this, uh, I'm working on things that are harder, so this I sort of do a sidelight. Uh, and I used to present this as, this is so easy. Actually, my wife, who was sitting there with the camera, actually said, this looks so easy, who's not a mathematician, a linguist. Uh, are you sure it hasn't been done? So, five years ago, I was saying to everybody, this is so easy that you can go home and explain, should be able to go home and explain half the talk to your roommate, even if they're not in math, they're white. <laughs> now I've been working on this five years. Toward the end, it gets harder. But the part I'm going to do today is really simple. Usually I talk about more involved things that the audience knows nothing about. So this is really easy. Now I promised Anne I wouldn't do it. Usually I pick a guinea pig in the audience and stop every five minutes and ask him if they follow. But she requested I don't do that, so I won't do no, that. No, you can do that to everybody except me. I <laughs> okay, so here's, okay, I guess we can go to the next slide. Oh yeah, that's that's yeah. This is joint work with Pedro, Silvia. Okay, go to the next one. Oh yeah, this these are silly. I mean, Pedro did these. I'm not. Okay, uh, I guess we'll stay there for a while. Okay, here's the idea. Uh, okay, so let's take a rectangular array and write zeros and ones in. So we're going to start with a rectangular matrix, and we're going to write zeros and ones in it. Okay, well this comes up all over, duh. In mathematics, I mean in computer science, these come up all over. And that's, that's the way I used to do it. Now, so many, 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 many things can be described by such a, so these are important. Now the problem is, even if you go with, um, with um, graphs, the trouble is that things can be described by more than one major. So if you have a graph, you can put the vertices here, the vertices there, and put a 1 if there's an edge. But you can do it another way. You can put the edges down here and the vertices here, and then if the vertices is on an edge. So there can be more than one Boolean matrix to describe. Oh, and any time you have a Boolean matrix to describe something, you can change the zeros to 1s to 1s to the zeros. So the point is, there's more than one way to describe, quote, the same thing with Boolean matrices, but these come up all over in computer science and in uh, math. Okay, that's I, simple idea one. So it doesn't matter, I'll get rows and columns mixed up, but that's, I guess, with the columns today. So the idea is, and we have to get, okay, keep, keep going, keep going. I gotta get keep going, keep going. I'll come back to this. Keep going. We gotta get yeah here. Is this Bill Raitler? Yes. Okay. This is uh, how do you pronounce it? Isaacian. Okay, Zer. I will call him Zer. His first name is Zer. I think we got his name. Okay. In 06, Zer is an Israeli mathematician. So he gave me, which I believe is due to him, but I'm not gonna do history. So I'm crediting him. He had an idea uh, of 
of when the columns of this matrix are independent. Okay, now let me ask, okay, how many people in the room know what a matroid is? Put up your hand, put it up. Okay, oh, okay that's good. Okay, so, okay, so we're sort of going to generalize matroid theory a little bit, or if you like matroids, you can just restrict the talk to matroids. Okay, so, but what matroids is, is an abstract study of linear independence. So we're talking McLean and Whitney uh, and Burkhoff in the 30s. So we all know about linear independence for vector spaces, so they're trying to generalize this idea. So Zur's idea, you can go back it up to wherever the, back to where the, you know, it's a matrix, yeah, that's good. Zur's idea is when are a subset, okay, so let's call all these columns of the matrix B. B is columns. Okay, it doesn't much matter. Okay, so we want to say when are a subset of columns independent? Okay, when is the subset? And the answer is, well, I'll give a couple, is if you have k elements here, if, you, if there exists k elements here, so when you go to this, so k elements, k of the rows, you've got to get this definition and explain it to your lib me. K columns of this are said to be independent. We're going to call it C independent, but I'll just say independent. If there exist K rows, so when you go to this square, if you permute the rows and you permute the columns independently, it becomes ones down here, zeros above, and anybody there. I will repeat this three times, because it's... So that's... I'll, I'll tell you, but that is not zero told me the first time. So let me give you this again. I give you a Boolean matrix. We're going to look at columns. Good looking at We're going to say, when are a subset of columns independent? And from data processing, you sort of independent means it's hard to compress. Dependent means you can maybe compress. So a set of columns, dependent means not independent. A set of K columns are independent if and only if I can find K rows so that when I go to the square, and permute this and this independently, it becomes ones on the diagonal and zero above. Right? Got Everybody's got this definition. You can explain it to your roommate. Okay. Uh, okay. So now the basic idea. So I was told this in 06. In 08, or maybe when I figured out, I said, hey, this will apply to a lot of math. It will apply to a lot of computer science. Because Boolean matrices are general. And here we have this great idea of linear independence. Or, I'll, or C or in, I'll say it doesn't matter what the adjective. We have this idea of independence for the row. So, that, so this is really going to apply to everything. Let's try to work out a theory. Okay? Now, okay, keep going. Uh, oh, I guess we'll stay there for a while. Okay, now what if you, okay, so we have a set B, and, and here they are the columns of the matrix, a Boolean <coughs> matrix. And H, these will be the independent sets. Okay, so, okay, so this is a bunch of subsets of V that are independent. Now this definition is trivial, that if, if H1 is in H and H2 is a subset of H1, that implies H2 is in H. So it's trivial by this definition that if you're independent, subsets are independent. So this is a non-controversial axiom about independent. The two non-controversial is it really only depends on the set. So if you, if you, live, if you write the things down, there can't be any repetitions, and it doesn't matter if you move them around. They're independent. So, and the other one is subsets of independent. So, so the, non, the idea of independent is, one, it's a set of things that are independent, and two, it's closed under taking some, is non-controversial. Now, this object, this is all strange, comes up, if you take any algebraic topology, this is a simplicial complex. See, an algebraic topology, I mean, uh, like this, okay, so if this is one, two, three, 
algebraic polynomials write down. I'll say one, two, three, one, two, two, three, one, three, and then the, the points and the empty set. And that's the simplicial complex that, okay? And if we get rid of that, the simplicial complex is that. So if you've taken any algebraic topology, the simplest uh, objects you start with is the collection of sets closed under taking subsets. They call it a simplicial complex. And they realize it in a high enough dimensional space. But now notice this is two dimensional, meaning there's three vectors here, and if you subtract one from the other two, it's fully independent. Okay, so I'm assuming you know about. Okay, so that's one. These have come up another way. They've come up in algebraic topology. They're the simplest objects in algebraic topology, and then you want to compute the, the homology, homotopy, cohomology, this stuff. Okay? Now, this is sort of funny, but they're coming up here. Okay? Now, now let me give you an alternative definition. Okay, keep going. Oh, yeah, we're always going to throw in all the two subsets to get rid of trivialities. And the rank is, well, now, now here, if you're, if you're going to be a monoid theorist or a matroid theorist, uh, then if you look at the maximal subsets that are lin independent, the, the, the size of the largest one is called rank. If you're topologist, you subtract one. That's because these three points will have rank three to a matroid theorist, but two to a topologist. So there's this dimension one shift. Okay, because you have to subtract one of these points from the other two, and it goes in. Okay, so we're just going to assume we always have the two subsets in there to get rid of trivialities. So here's the definition. You look at the maximal linear independent, independent sets, and you call that the rank. And you subtract one if your topology is called the dimension. Next. Uh, you either know what a matroid is or not, but, but here, okay, if you know what a matroid is, fine. If you don't know what it is, fine. Next. I'll do the talk both ways. Okay, now let's do something easy. 2,000 years ago, I love my life. 2,000 years ago, 1 plus 1 was 2. Okay, then around Galois, so we're doing even odds, Z2. 1 plus 1 is 0, right? Even an odd. Okay. Now you do bool. Okay. Now you do bool. Okay. Now we're doing truth values, and this is or, so it's 1. Okay. And, okay. And now, uh, today, or super boolean, Super Boolean. Then one plus one is one ghost. But think of one ghost as two or more. So two thousand years ago, one plus one is two. Okay. Then we have Kronika who says God gave us the integers and the rest is done to mine. But my public relations so bad. I'm in semi-group theory that the integers are now called a you know a semi-ring. Okay, even though God gave, okay, at any rate, Galois, Bull, tip, okay, think of this as two or more. Okay, so people can see on the board, everybody can see the boards, okay? Yeah, yeah okay. All right. Hey, this is fun, that's a lot of work though. I'm retired. <laughs> I did get lunch though, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so from the thing over there, we can certainly write down the Boolean thing. Under plus, this will be, right, and then times is, if I did it right, let's do super Boolean. Well, from the intuition there, that one ghost, let's not get into this. Everybody thinks things up has their own term. Okay. Let's do super boolean. Zero, one, two or more. Zero, one, two or more. Zero, one. One plus one is two or more. Two or more, two or more, two or more. That's plus, right? 
and then times is what you think it is. Well, it's on the board. I have to write it right. But you write it what you think. So from from these intuitions, you'll be able to write. Them. So this is Boolean. Now this is not a okay. Now, now okay. Let's go back to Galois. If you're going to do fields, you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide by non-zero. If you're going to do rings, see so progression, then you can add, subtract, and multiply, not necessarily divide. If you're going to do semi-rings, then you can't subtract and you can't divide, but you can add and multiply. And the multiplication does not need to be commutative. So I'll say that again. Fields. Everybody knows fields. We're grad students. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide by non-zero. Rings. Can't. You cannot do the uh, division necessarily. Okay. Semi-rings. You can't do the subtraction. But the multiplication does not need to be commuted. Okay? Fine. Now, a big idea in math these days is just redo math over a semi-ring. Get rid of the reals. Just redo the whole thing. Uh, uh, redo. Actually, when I taught undergraduate course at Berkeley, I guess that's what I did. Like, you can try to do Jordan holder theorem and never use minus. You don't really need money. So you can try to do all the math. Why do you want to do this? We'll get into this. Why you want to do all this? But let's redo all the math, but with a semi-ring instead of a whatever. Okay, big idea. A tough analysis. Okay. Now the point here, this is a very small piece of this program, but you'll sort of see how it goes. So that's one big idea. 